Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Tarot Map. So this is part two of my tarot deck collection. To be honest, I have no plan regarding how I'm filming this. I did have, um, at first I thought I'm going to, you know, structure it somehow. So I started with the historical decks and pip style decks, which you can watch as part one. But then I kind of got overwhelmed with the amount of decks that I have and this uh, part will just be decks that I have out, that I use most often and um, at least used most often recently and um, mostly these are independently printed decks but um, yeah, let's just go for it and start doing show and tell and so recently I actually pulled out that tarot, transparent tarot and you can see there is this um, little setup that I did of my Wheel of the Year tarot. So this is transparent tarot, which means um, you need like a white background to see what's on the card. And this deck comes with this white cloth, which you saw. And what's cool about this deck is that you can put a um, few images together and they create a story or you can spread it like that and they create a story so this is quite a cool deck the only bummer about it is that when you receive this deck you have to like wipe the plastic off because the cards stick together but once you do it you'll be fine so this deck is very interesting it's actually like Rider with Smith and um, it has symbols you know this is death can you see it like yeah it's just a scythe uh, and this is seven of pentacles so it's very basic very like simple simple symbols so this is eight of swords a little bit similar to you know that woman um temperance so emily Cardin created like um here we have devil chains sun Phoenix is for the judgment. So, you know, you can, if you know Rider with Smith system, you can get this system of transparent tarot very easily. Another deck that I love, use, and find very powerful and beautiful. I don't use it very often because it's quite an um, unusual deck and quite maybe sometimes uh, like full on. How gorgeous is this Empress? It's the Tarot of the Crown by uh, Ellen Lorenzi Prince. Um, she also created the uh, Dark Goddess Tarot. So uh, this is, the majors are quite okay to recognize, but then the minors are totally different. I do have a companion book to this deck as well. There's a new edition available right now. It's very witchy, a uh, very earthy kind of shamanic goddess-like. Love this Wheel of Fortune, your fingerprints, very cool. And the first edition has those um, kind of bags with a spider web and a spiral. And the new edition is all black, which is also beautiful. And so that's Tarot of the Crone. And the Dark Goddess Tarot, if you watch me, you know that I love this deck a lot. I love the companion book to it. Um, it's much bigger than Tarot of the Crone. These are the bags. They like um, fish. Uh, fish skin you know with the little tiles and um, yeah it's just tarot and the name of the goddess and then the book is amazing as a companion book it's gorgeous I love reading with this deck it's my kick in the touche deck um, honest powerful love it so use it often another one Let's just see. I'm not sure sometimes what's there. <laughs> so this is Osho Zen Tarot. This is one of my first decks. I have this deck since 2001, I think. So it's one of my oldest decks that I own. And still well loved. I really... Um, yeah, this deck for spiritual readings, for spiritual evolution. Also for an honest reading from like a wider perspective you know when you, because this deck gives you a wider perspective um yeah highly recommended this card got a little bit ripped so i had to glue it love this world card as completion it's very cool so yeah also osho zen tarot 
spiritual readings. And then we have Saki Saki Tarot. This one is very cool for, you know, when you're a little bit down maybe and you want to get some hyper vibes, a little bit of color. Uh, it's... I love this deck. I think it's stunning. Easy to read because it's Rider with Smith. I know that a lot of people find it annoying that these figures have no heads. So, yeah. If you find it annoying, that's probably not a deck for you, but I totally don't mind to love that deck. Um, it's very well done. I love the size and the feel of the paper, the colors. It's created um, by Monica. She's on Instagram. Um, Monica Kliosaki. That's her name. If my camera manages to focus. Yeah, here it is. So Saki Saki Tarot. It's very cool. Rider Waite Smith deck reminds me also of Kitty Kahain Tarot, which I'm going to show you right now. Um, or not. No, maybe not. I do have Kitty Kahain Tarot as well. But it disappeared somewhere. I'm not sure where I put it. Mm. Uh, so the next one is the Mother Peace Tarot, which I used quite a lot a few months ago. I do have the... This is a mini version of this deck. And I got also a companion book that it comes with. And it comes with this Mother Peace Tarot guidebook. So it came as a set. But I don't think it comes as a set with the regular tarot deck. It only comes as a set with this mini version. And it goes um, into the description of the cards with all the four positions. Um, so, you know, you can have it upside down, to the right and to the left. And each of the miners as well have those four positions. And I quite like this book, actually. It's, it's very cool. Very cool guidebook, definitely, to this deck. So I think each, everyone knows the Mother Peace Tarot. But here you go. There's a few images. It's a round deck. And, yeah, it's quite shamanic. Very kind of naive art style. So, yeah. Mother Peace Tarot. And then we have also Le Tarot de Femme Erotique, which I use most of the time as an oracle deck, actually. It's a tarot deck, but um, it's got those vintage images and vintage feel of uh, women of um, from, like, you know, I don't know, is it the 20s, maybe? 20s, 30s, and it's got um, the name of the card on the minor arcana. You've got just the symbol, and then you have this keyword or a key phrase. So, this is a turning in the journey for the moon, a strife from the five of wands, and three of wands destined to be. So, you know, when you, you can uh, kick off your intuition of the key phrase. Or just go with the tarot, traditional tarot system. Because the paintings, the pictures themselves are quite, I think to me at least, limited for the intuitive readings. But some of them are very cool. Just depends probably how you read. But I love this deck for emotional readings. It's very, you know, like a good girlfriend. If you want to have a chat when you have a broken heart or something. The, the Latero, the female erotic, is very cool. And this is the Serka Tarot. Um, I have the second edition. And um, I also swapped recently for the first edition. We'll see if it gets here. Um, but yeah, this deck is awesome. And I've spoken about this deck quite a few times. I love the colors, just the coloring of it. It's so stunning. And actually it reads quite, quite well. I mean, it's not for people who don't like those fantastical kind of features on people. But um, I don't mind at all. And I actually love reading with this deck. And just when you put a few cards together, that just looks so beautiful. You know, it's just one of those 
Yummy Decks. And so this is Serka Tara. And I think she's reprinting now, so you can actually get this deck ordered from um, the Serka Tara website. C-I-R-C-O. Another deck that is one of my faves is Tarot of Transformation. So I do use it often. I use it a lot, especially when I need some higher guidance and I need to converse closely with my guides or with my higher self. Uh, I always call it like this because that's my, you know, very kind of one-on-one -on -one conversation. And then I show these decks, and I have two Carol Hertz's decks. Um, this is Elemental Rainbows, the perfect size or the large size. I'm not sure, but I think it's more like a perfect size. Elemental Rainbows. Oh, this doesn't belong here. And um, these are the bags. And this is, I think, Mystic bag. And then I have also the Illuminated Tarot original version because there's quite a few on her website. So this is the Illuminated Tarot original version when you have the names written on the cards and it's basically Rider with Smith but changed by Carol Beautified. You can get them with um, iridescent paint, you can get them with glitter. They're quite pricey, but um, Carol Hetzer makes those decks herself, so it's totally up to you to, you know, decide if you want to spend money on that or not. Another one that I managed to get in this uh, swap at some point is Victoria Regina Tarot. It's also an out-of-print deck and quite hard to find, I think. It's white, black and white, it's quite big. And it's kind of Rider Waite Smith based, but yeah, it's very different. It's about Victorian age. So there are um, coins and wands are like pens, and yeah, some of the cards are gorgeous. And I don't actually use this deck very often. I, I thought I would be using it more often because I found it stunning, but I don't know, it's just one of those things you never know until you have a deck in your hands so we'll see but it definitely a beautiful deck and one of not many white and bl black and white decks that I own and next uh, deck that I use maybe much often very often recently because it's quite a new deck it's the intuitive tarot by Sila Conway so these are the bags and I love the artwork in this deck the colors it's Rider with Smith based. Um, it's very easy to read, and maybe through this oval shape, it really feels kind of intuitive. So I quite enjoy it. It's beautiful. Intuitive Tarot by Sila Conway. Very cool deck for yeah, just exploring stuff. I use it actually for everything, really. This is um, Teldwick Tara, which I also got from a swap. And this is a very different deck to any other deck I own. So here is here are the bags, like very kind of autumn-y bag. And this deck requires you to kind of like go in, because the deck, as you can see, is very... Not hard to read, you would think, but it is very vaguely based on the Rider Waite Smith system as well. So, for example, Six of Cups, you have those, you know, beautiful cups, the sea, water, everything is harmonious and beautiful, like those two children and two, and all the six cups filled with flowers. But it's, you know, compared to this card, for example, when you also have those vague Marseille swords so this is ten of swords and you just see kind of like a well hard even to say but like um this item you can shave uh, shave your beard with i would say <laughs> maybe a piece of paper yeah it's kind of um it's a very unusual deck so two of swords 
we have one dove but it's outside and again the swords have those Marseille markings on this is eight of wands and queen of cups you have this lushness garden queens are connected to water so each queen has like a little water feature um you know seven of staves it's uh, about this guy usually rather with smith that you we say traditionally it's a card of uh, perseverance and you know dealing with stuff that coming that's coming at you and here you have those soldiers waiting for things to happen so you know you can really learn to read it it's quite an amazing and beautiful deck but yeah it's very unusual definitely not for a quick read because when you put the cards next to one another it's they're quite like similarly looking so I, it's more a deck for uh, meditation, for contemplation, stuff like this. Then I have Gothic, Bohemian Gothic Tarot, um, also from Swap. Most of my decks I got from Swap. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. So this is um, beautiful bags. I love this deck. It's very funny, hauntingly funny. It's very, um, like, at times hilarious, at times, like, at this shadow you have to have a good sense of humor it's definitely not a deck for everybody but it actually reads, reads really well i use it often for the shadow work because it's just adds another layer like you know it kind of laughs at archetypes of tarot or of the tarot system it adds this funny like look at the queen four of pentacles mm. queen of swords so there is a lot of cool depictions and I love the coloring of it it's beautiful I think you can get it on Tarot BG it's still available I don't know which edition I think I have the does it matter really but maybe let's check I have the second edition I think Okay, so I also have the romantic Victorian romantic tarot from Baba Studio, also from a swap. And this one has these bags and it's gilded. And it's very cool to read for love readings because it tells nice stories. And the archetypes are quite um, talkative, you know, easy to. Uh, connect the cards together, easy to speak about them and so it's quite a beautiful deck to tell stories with tarot, I like it for that reason um, and then I have this um, serpent fire tarot and um, it's I think the sixth edition so these are the backs it's gilded, also from a swap and I quite like this deck. Again, I haven't used it that much. I like the booklet, which comes with the deck. I quite like the images. It's out there, but it's for me, it's less out there than Star Child Tarot. And it's much more maybe balanced. Earthy and cosmic energies balance a bit better maybe in this deck for me. Because in Star Child, as much as I like it, I miss the earthiness of it and this one gives me that feeling of earth but also that cosmic weird energies too so I enjoy this deck but yeah I haven't really kind of played with it very often I only use it for myself I never read with it for anybody else Um talking about Star Child maybe we should Show the Star Child. I've got this edition, uh, Kashik edition, but the bigger one with the white frames. I like it better. So these are the bags. There's just something beautiful about Star Child. And as much as I wanted to, you know, um, I swapped the borderless edition and I kind of wanted to give up on it because I couldn't really connect to this deck. Recently when I started using Star Child as addition to my normal tarot reading but uh, asking for the spiritual perspective, I started to connecting to this deck and that was quite cool. So I'm happy I kept it. And there is something very unique about this deck and I love to have decks that are unique in my uh, collection. And also, you know, the 
like an execution of it, Danielle has done an amazing job with all of the additions that I had in my hands. Another one that I got recently from a swap is the Lioness Tarot Oracle. Um, it's this uh, gorgeous um, collage deck. Uh, if it comes to reading with it, I go very intuitively. Sometimes I use it more um, as traditional tarot, but it gives you a lot of intuitive hits when you just look at the pictures. Um, I don't really have so much to say about it because I don't have this deck for a very long time. I only had it for maybe two weeks, so I got it from a swap because I wasn't sure. I probably wouldn't have bought it, but I wanted to see. Sometimes with decks you never know if you're going to use them or not unless you have them in your hands. So yeah, this one is one um, also beautifully made and published, but not really maybe my favorite ever. Oh, just made this some beautiful coffee. This is one of my very special score decks. This one was probably one of my most expensive decks that I bought. And the Smart Tarot. I actually found it in Poland on a Polish website. And it wasn't maybe that bad because it cost me around $100. But for me that's quite a lot for a deck. But I don't regret it because this deck is so stunning. And I have the 250 out of 1000 that were published and printed. So um, it came with a book, um, hardcover book. And this deck is just, it has the um, moon quarters days and uh, natural days of the wheel, like candle mass and, you know, winter solstice and stuff like that. And the artwork of Julie Kusia Watts is just amazing. But also swapped elements. So swords are fire and wands are air. So that's interesting. In quite a few decks and the elements got swapped. And I can actually, as I said at some point, I can understand that. Another deck of hers that I have is this Ancestral Path Tarot. And it's very cool also. I used it often for ancestral connections, ancestral readings, reads great. Um, it has four distinct cultures and the majors are all kind of mixed, but you have Japanese, Native American, kind of Indian culture, Egyptian and English like uh, King Arthur and stuff. So it's quite interesting what you get. Um, I really love this deck. It reads very well too. Another one of my faves is the Sasurai Bito Tarot. And this one, the colors and the depictions are just so amazing. Very easy read. I read it for people many times. It reads great. People love it. Easy to connect to the images. Um, the clients seem to be kind of really enjoying discussing the images with this tarot deck. Um, this is Margaret Peterson Tarot, which I love dearly. It's a very special deck to me. Um, I mostly use it for myself and more for meditation and contemplation as well. It's The booklet is amazing and it's a very top shelf spiritual deck for me. Whoever wrote this deck, I mean Margaret Peterson obviously, <laughs> but um, shit. She might have really... Um, it, she, might, she must be a highly evolved person because the way she writes about tarot, about uh, spirituality, about meditation, about understanding the archetypes, it's just wow, amazing. So I'm loving it. Um, there's a few more that I have today for this part. So one is the Animal um, Wisdom Tarot. It's so gorgeous. I love it. It's a very sweet deck. Um, when I need a hug or I don't want to look at people on the cards, this is one of those amazing little decks that I would reach for. And um, you can definitely work with children with this deck, tell stories about animals. The book, uh, companion book, is very cute. Um, here I have my mass market um, Wild Unknown Tarot, which I trimmed. 
I use it a lot when I travel, I take it, it's quite handy. I like it, it's a very cool deck. This is also one of my loves, my nature deck. It's the Wildwood Tarot. And um, as I said, I at some point used to walk around the forest, look at the plant, shuffle the cards, thinking, connecting to that plant or a tree and saying like, what message do you have for me? And then I would like, you know, pull one card and see, okay, thanks. And just I kind of reflect on, on that. So that nature um, meditation with this deck was very cool. And I learned a lot actually. And funny enough, I mostly always put um, pulled the Major Arcana. I was surprised because I was shuffling the whole deck. Another deck that I used a lot in 2017. I can see on the box, even though the cards are still very cool, they well preserved, is the Orasoma Tarot, which I received as a gift. It was one of the highlights, actually, of 2017 because... Uh, Thank you, Krishna Priya, for that. And I love this deck. I used it for people a lot. I used to do readings um, for like the birth card, for uh, as additions to my readings, my tarot readings. I will get back to this um, habit actually because it was quite in interesting for people from the feedback which I got. This is a very kind of out the deck very spiritual with archangels and stuff you can skip the archangels but it's great for energy healing also and for it's a very intuitive read so if you have a client that is inclined uh, to go the spiritual heights you can definitely read with this deck and people will love it for people who are more practical that might be a bit too much but I personally really love this deck and using the Orasoma books as well. And this is also one of my faves, um, Tarot de Saint Croix. And I've used this deck so many times this year. And um, it's one of the f my favorite client reading decks because it's, um, it's a wholesome, not too threatening, um, all encompassing kind of practical deck. So I really love this one. Lisa de San Croix did a great job with this deck. I spoke about this deck quite a few times before and then I have uh, last two decks left in this. This is my Tarot of the She with my little fairy here. She is a race. Apparently they're not fairy so much but um, here are the cards which I trimmed and I love this deck again I haven't used it recently but I did use it a lot and I am happy to every time I pull it out I love it and this is one of the decks I had quite a few cool experiences with and um, yeah and especially with this lady here I really love this. So Emily Carding, another deck of hers. And the last one is also beautiful gift from Lisa, the um, Aquarian Tarot, which I adore. And it's, as I mentioned at some point, it's one of those decks that I think it connects to collective subconscious, you know, that it works. When you ask a question and pull cards from this deck, it kind of gives you as it is. So the answers are quite... Um, I have this theory that if a tarot deck is used for a very, very long time and a lot of people use the same tarot deck for a long time like it was with Rider with Smith or Aquarian Tarot because now there's so many new decks, like all the time we have new decks. But in like, you know, a few years back there was only Rider with Smith or Aquarian or whatever. And I think people create like this common memory that um, then gets um we can access this memory tap into it you know just um use it to our benefit and enhance our own personal readings with this collective uh, field of information so i highly I believe this theory <laughs> and i think aquarian terror is one of those decks that scores because of that Okay, um, 
thank you everyone for watching. I wanted to say that um, I'm really grateful to all of you for being here throughout the 2000, 2017 and I hope we will stick together in 2018 as well. There's still a few parts of this video to come, <laughs> more tarot decks and also a video with oracle decks, um, but um, I'm a little bit tired of this so I think I will do the rest um, after the new year um, in any case again I extend my huge gratitude to all of you for uh, commenting liking being here um, you made my year very special because of that so um, yeah I'm very very grateful and happy to be a part of this amazing community here on YouTube um, so thank you to all of you and I wish you a very happy 2018 may it be a year of um, abundance for you and um, may it be a year where we share our resources where we share our talents when we are not afraid to claim our greatness when we act a lot from the heart center and when uh, we learn how to compassionately listen and how to empathically speak uh, with each other and um, I really hope that if we keep the vision of a um, beautiful, equal, loving and kind world we will create that world, maybe not for everybody on this planet but maybe for um, majority or maybe for the closest environment that we choose to live with and um, yeah I hope the world will be a place um, that we won't be ashamed to leave behind when we move on and pass on uh, thanks anyway and I speak to you soon thank you for watching bye